Well, the Belarusian opposition leader Svetlana Tikhanovskaya has been speaking to the Council of Europe. She's currently in exile in Lithuania, as we were saying, and addressed the meeting via video link, outlining the oppressive measures being taken by President Lukashenko as he tries to maintain his grip on power. Have a listen. Only yesterday, one of the leaders of the peaceful protests, Maria Kalesnikova, was kidnapped. Also kidnapped were Anton Radnenkov and Ivan Kravtsov. All of them were members of the team of Viktor Babarika, who is in jail for simply daring to run for president. My husband, Sergei Tikhanovsky, is in jail for the same reason. Pavel Severinets, jailed. Sergei Delievsky, jailed. Mikola Statkevich, jailed. Hundreds of people are jailed, beaten, raped. This should not be the norm in Europe. This can't be the norm in a civilized, in a civilized world. So that was uh, Svetlana Tikhanovskaya there speaking to the Council for Europe. And as we've been reporting, officials in Belarus say one of the main opposition leaders, Maria Kolesnikova, has been detained at the border with Ukraine. The circumstances have not been confirmed, but Ukraine's Deputy Interior Minister says she was being expelled from uh, Belarus with two male opposition uh, activists. Now, among the people listening to that speech was Rick Dames, the President of Parliamentary Assembly at the Council of Europe. He joins me now from Strasbourg. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us here uh, on the programme. If you can just, we've just had, heard a little bit of what uh, Svetlana Tikhanovskaya had to say, but if you could just sum it up for us. Basically, what uh, Madam Tikhanovskaya is saying that uh, there's a big movement in uh, Belarus at the moment, uh, change, it's a cry out for change. And the authorities uh, should take that into account and they should start some kind of a process uh, for that the country would become more democratic, if not completely democratic, and respect human rights. I mean, the, the violence that we see at this stage, the, the apprehending of people just voicing their opinion, that has to stop And People who are in prison now, they should be basically uh, freed. Uh, in the last few minutes, we're, we're hearing reports that uh, the Belarusian leader, Alexander Lukashenko, has said to Russian news agencies that uh, he may have overstayed a bit and that he's also not ruling out early presidential elections. Do you welcome this? Well, as you say in English, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. I mean, you cannot always trust what statements say. So if this is truly what his opinion is, then I would welcome that. Uh, but on the other hand, we all know, and this has been stated by Lord Blancatra, who is a member of our assembly, you cannot have new elections provided that uh, uh, if, if the electoral code is not changed. Because at the end of the day, if the electoral system stays the same, uh, whatever vote you have, the, the result will be the same. So I kind of agree with that, that there needs to be a new electoral code in place before you have elections. Mm -hmm. This being said, what has to stop again is this senseless violence putting people to prison and bringing people together. And as far as we are concerned from the Council of Europe, we've got all the expertise having gone through this process in, in different countries of Europe. Uh, we have all the expertise to assist this kind of a, of a progress towards uh, human rights, uh, fundamental freedoms, democracy and rule of law. I suppose at the end of the day, despite the protests, uh, despite the pressure coming from, from Europe and the international community, Alexander Lukashenko is clinging to power. So it does feel in many ways like the pressure is not really working. Well, if you just uh, hear and, and, and look at his statement, one might think it does. On the other hand, uh, what I've said in the beginning of our meeting uh, this morning is that before you know it, this kind of a, of a popular movement the Belarus people crying out for democracy and for their rights, if we do not watch out, this may turn out into something which is an uncontrollable revolution, what have you, and that will be worse, which is why we have said, listen, instead of having that, why don't we try to have an evolution towards democracy, towards human rights, and towards uh, fundamental freedom? And again, if we, can assist, if we can assist to that, we will gladly do so, and we have the expertise, and having heard uh, the representative of the Belarus parliament, he is voicing a little bit the same, but again, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. 
Uh, the other thing we heard Svetlana Tikhanovskaya say was she went through a list of the activists and the leaders from the opposition who have either disappeared or been detained or pushed out of the country. I mean, where does this end? Well, I hope it ends now. And I hope that as a, in terms of confidence building measures, the authorities understand that they should free these people because you cannot have people in prison just and simply because they've got a different opinion as to the opinion of the authorities. So my so guess Europe is that we can only enough. have this Do you think start Europe is doing enough are, by, by uh, having meetings and, and giving out these statements and listening, uh, listening to this? It's, it's a very different reality on the ground, isn't it? It is. But of course, uh, we can do what we can do in the Council of Europe and we can provide with the expertise, the assistance to have this process basically have a good result. We do not have the means of putting pressure the way European countries, the Union or what have you, uh, may use in order to have enough pressure inside the country in order that process to be started. Uh, one thing is sure, I mean, it will be the Belarus people themselves who need to solve the problem. And okay. this is why I Mr. Dems, unfortunately, we've run out of time here on BBC World News, but thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back.